From the beginning, we knew setting out to build the first new nuclear power units in the United States in over 30 years was a monumental undertaking. Yet, the opportunity to serve our customers with clean, safe, reliable, and affordable energy for decades to come was at the center of our vision for Plant Vogel. Yes, the challenges we faced were big, but today, Thanks to visionary leaders, more than 9,000 construction workers, and more than 30 million hours of work, we did it. With all four units now in operation, Plant Vogel is the largest generator of clean energy in the United States. We're proud that our vision is now reality. Together, we're providing clean energy for a growing Georgia. Good morning. My name's John Williams, and on behalf of the more than 35,000 workers that built Vogel 3 and 4, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the country's largest clean energy generating plant. In a moment, I'll turn it over to our president, chairman, and CEO, Chris Womack, but before we go any further, like in everything we do here at Plant Vogel, we'll start with a safety briefing. If there is an emergency, our on-site Southern Nuclear Security Team members will take charge and direct us on the response that's necessary. There are fire extinguishers and AEDs available on-site and will be retrieved by our security team if needed. Paramedics are also on-site and integrated in with our security team should a medical issue arise. Thanks for helping us put safety first. And now, please stand for the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the Please be seated. Now it is my pleasure to introduce the Chairman, President, and Chief Executive Officer of the Southern Company, Mr. Chris Womack. Good morning. Thank you, John. Good morning and welcome. What a wonderful day this is and what a wonderful rendition of our national anthem. Again, thank you very much for honoring us and honoring this country. What a special time this is. Today is a momentous occasion as we celebrate this accomplishment. The completion of Vogel Units 3 and 4 is an important accomplishment for our company, the state of Georgia, and the entire United States. 
at this site, we now are the largest generator of clean energy in America. We have proven, yes, we are the largest site in the United States. We have proven in the United States we can do hard things. We can build big things. We can build new nuclear plants here in the U.S. Give yourselves, give yourselves a big round of applause. I owe a great thanks to so many in this room and so many are that are not here. But it's a great big thank you to everyone for being here to celebrate this great day with us. As we begin, I must, and I've, for the past two days, I've been thanking a lot of people because they deserve it. But I want to recognize those who have contributed to the success of this project, including our partners and many of our honored guests. First, let me give a big thank you for her presence, for taking the time to share with us and give her a big, big, big Georgia welcome to our nation's Secretary of Energy, Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm. Thank you. It's an honor to have you with us. Also, the director of the loan program office, because without the loan guarantee for us as well as of our co-owners, this would not have been possible. We thank the U.S. Department of Energy's loan program officer, Jigger Shaw. Jigger, where are you? Come on, Jigger, stand up. Let everybody see you. Don't hide. Don't blend in. Thank you. And also, we're pleased to have from the White House the National Climate Advisor, Ali Zidi. Ali, thank you for joining us and being with us today. You know, this has been an arduous journey for us. But the journey, when it's difficult and tough, is a lot easier when you're not alone. And so we have representatives from our partners and co-owners who have been with us through this journey. Oglethorpe Power Company, MEAG Power, and the city of Dalton. Can you guys please stand and, and be recognized? Thank you very much. We have our Southern Company board have been steadfast and provided us great guidance and counsel and wisdom through this journey. And so let me recognize our board members. Um, I see Dale Klein, Dale Klein, Christine Savinicki, and former board member Ernie Moniz. Thank you for being here with us today. And also, I must also recognize my predecessor, the one and the only, the great Tom Fanning. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. We also have many members of our management leadership team that are here from across the system. Guys, thank you all for your hard work, your guidance, and being so supportive of Vogel 3 and 4. Also, let me thank many of the current and former elected officials who have supported the project. So many current and former officials have supported the project, as well as members of the Georgia General Assembly and other state and local officials. We're pleased to have with us also Congressman U.S. Representative Rick Allen. Rick, thank you for being with us. And another great partner that we've had through this entire endeavor has been the Georgia Public Service Commission. And I know Tim Eccles is here, and I thank him for his vocal support, particularly back in the periods of 2017 when the PSC, PSC was confronted with the challenges of the, of the Westinghouse bankruptcy. Tim, thank you for standing up and staying strong. Tim, thank you very, very much. We've had strong support all across the world, all across the globe, and all across this country. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, and we're pleased to have the chairman of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, Willie Phillips. Willie, please stand and be recognized. And we also thank our partners from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and other agencies who have been good partners of ours. 
Of course, none of this would, would have been possible without a workforce. And those who bring our workers together through the building trades, the National Association of Building Trades, LIONA and the IBEW, Sharon McGarvey's here today, and you'll hear from Sharon later. But also we have Brent Booker here from LIONA. Brent, would you wave your hand? Thank you very much. And finally, I'd like to thank and recognize all the men and women of Southern Nuclear, Southern Company, Georgia Power, and others across this system, some of whom are in, in attendance today, while many others are watching this virtually via live stream. Thank you so very much for your dedication, for your commitment to this company. Let's give our workers across this company a big round of applause. Thank you so very much. And now to introduce Secretary Granholm, please welcome to the stage a very special Georgia Power nuclear plant operator, one of the few people to have operated all four units here at Plant Vogel. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Jeff Quick. Jeff, please come forward. Thanks, Chris, and good morning. My name is Jeff Quick. I'm a lifelong Waynesboro, Burke County resident and a proud member of IBEW Local 84. And Chris, <laughs> and Chris, I am the only operator that has operated all four nuclear units here at Vogel. My career started here back in 1984 as a laborer, but I soon joined the operations group and I've been here ever since. I've watched the development of the farmland that I knew as a child into this incredible nuclear facility that not only serves the Waynesboro community with wonderful career opportunities, but also the largest clean energy generator in the United States. It's amazing to stand here today and see how far we've come thanks to the efforts of hardworking men and women that constructed and those that continue to operate and maintain this facility. It is truly something to be proud of. Now, it is my honor to introduce the Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm. Thank you, Jeff. Wow. Uh, it is great to be here. And um, Chris, I just want to foot stomp all of the acknowledgments and the thank yous that you went through as well. I think that every Secretary of Energy, and I'm looking at two of them right here, since 2005 has visited this site. But I'm lucky enough to be able to see all four units up and running. And this facility really exists today because as you know, over a decade ago, a group of visionary leaders made a commitment to meeting the energy needs of Georgia's residents, not for just a year, not for just five years, but for decades to come. And even though this would be the first construction of this, de this uh, reactor design, they knew that the plant would safely power this region's economy for gen generations. The economy. These were, these visionaries, many of whom are in this room, were the generals who drew up the battle plans for this construction. 
and betting on new design, new industries, new technologies. It takes guts, but it pays off. And this project is a prime example of how first-of-a-kind challenges can become nth-of-a-kind successes thanks to the work of those who came before and public-private partnerships. I mean, some first-mover projects are just are too big, they're too financially risky, they're uh, too much for the private sector to do by itself. But these same kind of projects are too important for our nation to fail to act. And so these reactors, these reactors are the result of lots of collaboration between industry and the Department of Energy. I mean, starting with the science and research that led to safer and more efficient advanced reactor designs through a, a long collaboration between our Office of Nuclear Energy and Westinghouse to support the licensing of the AP1000 reactor, and then financing, as was mentioned, from the Department's Loan Programs Office starting back in 2014, even before Jigger Shaw, to build these first two AP1000 reactors. In fact, years of cooperation between LPO, the Loan Programs Office, and Southern Company, and Westinghouse, and Bechtel, and NAB2, and Burke County, and countless Georgia leaders all got us to this moment. Years of persistence through long work days, and cost challenges, and bankruptcy, and a global pandemic. Years of persistence got us to this moment. And the road hasn't been easy, obviously, as you know. But the good times and the hard times are a down payment on 80 years of 24-7 clean power. So I know you know, and it's been said, Vogel 3 and 4 are the first reactors to be built from scratch in the United States in more than a generation, that this completion of Unit 4, as everybody has said, makes this the largest nuclear power plant, the largest producer of clean energy, the largest producer of electricity in the United States, period. You know the stats. Each year, Units 3 and 4 are going to produce enough clean power to power 1 million homes and businesses, enough energy to power roughly one in four homes in Georgia, preventing 10 million metric tons of carbon dioxide pollution annually. That, by the way, is like planting more than 165 million trees every year. And that's not to mention the historic investments that Southern has made on the safety front to ensure that this facility meets and exceeds the highest operating standards in the world. The safety of this site from the early days of construction to today is really a credit to John Williams and his team, to Sean McGarvey and our NAB2 partners, and to the more than 35,000 people who have been boots on the ground at this project. At peak construction, I understand there were 9,000 workers on site. Units three and four are going to support more than 800 union workers moving forward. And as Jeff and others can attest, these are, these are great jobs, jobs that people want to get, jobs that people want to grow in, jobs that parents want for their kids, jobs you can raise a family on, and they're going to be around for the next 80 years. And the story, by the way, is same. it's the same nationwide. Nuclear plants offer salaries that are 30% higher than local averages. As they, you know, those salaries, these projects drive more job growth than any other kind of energy facility nuclear does. But the benefits of nuclear don't end there. Plants like this one obviously are economic magnets because clean 24-7 power is now irresistible to companies that are looking to build big manufacturing facilities, big data centers, and those facilities mean even more jobs and even greater opportunities. 
And all of that, of course, means an influx to tax dollars for communities like Waynesboro. Studies actually show that nuclear plants like Vogel can fund up to half of local, county, and school budgets. Southern Company and Waynesboro, they led the way here. But it is now time for others to follow their lead. To reach our goal of getting to net zero by 2050, we have to at least triple our current nuclear capacity in this country. That means we've got to add 200 more gigawatts by 2050. OK, two down, 198 to go. In building four, we've solved our greatest design challenges. We've stood up entire supply chains. We've trained thousands, I say we, you all, have trained thousands of skilled workers. And so it's time to cash in on those investments by building more, more of these facilities. So DOE's Loan Programs Office stands ready to help with hundreds of billions of dollars in what we call Title 17 loans. President Biden's agenda delivers these irresistible incentives from zero emission nuclear production tax credits to $2.5 billion for advanced reactor demonstrations to irresistible investment tax credits, in some cases up to 50% for building new nuclear facilities. Since the President signed the Inflation Reduction Act and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, companies across the nation have announced 29 new or expanded nuclear facilities across 16 states, representing about 1,600 potential new jobs. And the majority of those projects will expand the domestic uranium production and fuel fabrication, strengthening these critical supply chains for plants like Vogel. But you know, we have built and secured $3.4 billion to build this entire uranium fuel strategy in the United States so that we're not reliant on Russia for low enriched uranium or high assay low enriched uranium. We are the ones keeping the, we are, we are hoping that you're the ones, I'll say, that are keeping the fleet online, but we're helping because for all of these facilities, we have a civil nuclear credit of $6 billion from the bipartisan infrastructure law. Bottom line is, in short, we are determined to build a world-class nuclear industry in the United States, and we're putting our money where our mouth is. Southern has led the way, and now we need other utilities and buyers of clean power to enlist. For decades, the power of the atom has been used to protect us with a nuclear deterrent that is safe, secure, and effective. And the power of the atom is also being used to protect us in this important way, by providing clean and reliable power to our electricity grid. In, in fact, President Eisenhower referred to it as atoms for peace. Producing US-generated clean electrons benefits our homeland's security. Our people, our homes, our businesses are more secure with ample, clean, baseload power. We're more secure when we're less subject to climate change fueled extreme weather events. We're more secure when we can reduce carbon pollution. So these reactors are part of our national security and our clean energy future. So to all of you, who dreamed and toiled to make this happen. You are both the generals and the foot soldiers on the front line in this battle against the most relentless foe, which is climate change. Thank you for your guts. Thank you for your service to Georgia. Thank you for your service to our nation in providing this arsenal of clean power. So now, Let's draw up some more battle plans for some more reactors. I don't know about you, but I, for one, am reporting for duty. Madam Secretary, thank you so much for your very, very kind words. And again, 
Thank you for being present with us today. You honor us. Thank you very much. Now let me welcome to the podium Ali Zidi from the White House. He's the National Climate Advisor. Ali, please come forward. You know, for a generation of young people who are growing up today, the story about climate change, the easy one, is the one that they see in front of their eyes every single day. The skies turning orange, the hurricanes, the floods, and the fury that they bring, the smoke that so many are breathing into their lungs from wildfires burning hundreds of miles away. That's the story of doom and despair, and it's a real one. But here we stand on a blue sky day in a beautiful part of Georgia to tell a different and I think more powerful part of the climate change story. And that's the story of hope and possibilities. The story of America coming together under President Biden's leadership and mounting a response that is equal to the task. And Chris and the leadership here and every single one of you in this room are partners in doing that essential work. Not just delivering power to the grid, but a reason for our young people to be hopeful about the future. There are a lot of ways to measure what we are sitting in front of. One of the statistics that was staggering is that the weight of each of these reactors is equivalent to the Statue of Liberty. That's some heavy stuff. But the numbers, I think, that are so compelling to me are not just the million homes that will power, but the fact that that's power delivered while taking enough pollution off the roads that's equivalent to a million cars a year. The statistic that's powerful, and you see it all the way in the control room, Jeff and others, members of the local IBW, is the more than 100 million craft hours devoted, dedicated to lifting up these magnificent sites. And this transformation, it cascades in so many ways across our country. It cascades, as the Secretary said, into a supply chain that's coming home. A supply chain all the way from the fuel to the steel and the cement that gets poured here, cleaner than the stuff we would have imported from places like China. And it's a cascade, not just through the nuclear industry, but all the other ones that it enables and unlocks. You see here in Georgia, we've had political leadership that helped us pass the Inflation Reduction Act that not only delivers, by the way, what we rolled out this week, technology neutral tax credits to tackle the climate crisis, but also ways to electrify our entire economy and bring manufacturing here. Clean power reliable, affordable, resilient, is the essential building block to unlocking that entire economic success. And in Georgia, you see that, whether it's the batteries being manufactured here, or the Bluebird facility, recently unionized by the steelworkers that's putting those batteries into the iconic yellow school bus, now turning green. This is a story about economic security. It's a story about energy security. It's a story about prosperity. It's a story about not just tripling nuclear here, but as we resolved in Dubai at the United Nations Climate Conference to triple nuclear by the middle of this century all around the world, and for America to be the essential leader in driving forward that progress. Today, we celebrate not just steel that's gone into the ground, but steel into the spine of the American middle class. The workers that have powered us this far, 
will be our ace in driving forward the incredible progress that we have yet to make, to mount that essential challenge to this crisis that defines the moment, to deliver hope and hopefulness to our young people, to deliver on the promise that the President has talked about from day one. When he thinks climate, he thinks jobs, he thinks opportunity, he thinks American leadership. And Chris, you and so many of the folks in this room, through years of determination, years of persistence, have proven this is the moment America's not tinkering around the edges. We're going big, we're here to win, and we're delivering the goods. Thanks so much. Ali, thank you so very much. And now I want to bring up Tim Hall. Tim is one of the thousands of skilled laborers who made this project happen, and he's going to introduce our next presenter. Tim? Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name's Timothy Hall. I'm a 26-year member of the Plumbers and Steamfitters Local Union Number 150 out of Augusta, Georgia. Uh, I'm honored to have been asked today to speak on behalf of the thousands of trade people who were involved in the construction of Units 3 and 4 here at Bogle. Uh, every trade was represented here at one point or another exhibiting craftsmanship on a huge and world-class scale. During construction, this project had an astronomical amount of concrete, rebar, scaffolding, piping, electrical wiring, steel, and groundwork. Each trade was faced with many challenges ranging from weather, communication, logistics of such a large-scale project, and even a global pandemic, to mention a few. These problems were overcome due to a sense of pride and commitment in knowing that we were working towards something that hasn't been done in over 35 years. There were tradespeople from all over the nation with different background, backgrounds and skill levels working together with a common goal. And that goal was to complete this project safely and show everyone what our union tradespeople are capable of. Walking in and out with these hardworking individuals every day gave me an overwhelming sense of brotherhood and accomplishment. And being here today is especially rewarding for me because I can remember when I was young Vogel units one and two was under construction and my stepfather actually worked on the project. And I can remember my mother loading my brother and I up and driving us out here and parking right over where that building's at over there and watching all the tradespeople come in and out with my stepfather. Um, again, I am tremendously honored to have been involved in such a large and important project that will supply power for millions of people for generations. My story, uh, and so many others, is what our next speaker fights for every day. Sean McGarvey understands the integral role of collaboration between labor, industry, and government. With a career spanning over three decades, Mr. McGarvey has been unwavering in his commitment to improve the lives of workers across North America. His vision always puts workers first. He champions initiatives that increase access to quality training and apprenticeship programs so that more people from all walks of life can have a story like mine. His efforts have led to significant advancements in labor policies, fostering environments where large-scale projects can thrive while prioritizing the welfare of the workers involved. At Plant Vogel, skilled workers have been pivotal in driving forward one of the most ambitious energy projects in the country. Sean's leadership has been vital to the project's success and the amazing building trades workers on the project who he represents. So with that being said, it's my pleasure to introduce the president of North America's Building Trade Union, Mr. Sean McGarvey. Thank you, Tim. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me just start off by saying, wow. Um, this is just a wow day. And Chris, um, thank you for the opportunity uh, to be here. I know it's impossible to thank everybody, but, but there are some people that I would, I would really like to point out who were 
who were critical to the interface with the building trades along the way. And we have a saying at the building trades that I learned when I was a young craftsperson that through good business comes good friends. And we have made phenomenal friends with Southern Company and Georgia Power across this whole, whole footprint. So Kim Green, Brian Anderson, who we not only worked down here, but we worked in Washington and, and got a few things done. Tom Fanning, who probably taught me more about how to do my business than I ever would have learned without you. Tom, thank you for everything that you taught me about how to be a leader. Paul Bowers, Mark Crosswhite, Jeff Peoples, Steve Kaczynski, everybody at Bechtel, Brendan Bechtel, and even, even Buzz Miller, who I haven't seen in years, uh, but was integral to the beginning of putting this partnership together. And I got, me and Brent Booker got some bad information and heard that uh, Buzz had passed and sent an edible arrangement. Never got a thank you. Obviously, you were on the fourth tee, Buzz. Um, I'm really glad you made it. It's great to see you. Today is a testament to partnership and leadership. I stand before you on behalf of three million building trades members and their families affiliated with our 14 international unions to highlight this monumental and the significance of completing Vogel's units three and four. And I applaud the massive feat, and there's no question it was a massive feat. Today is not just a milestone for, glo for the global energy sector, it's a testament to the resilience dedication, craftsmanship of thousands of union workers. You've heard 9,000. There was 9,000 people here at peak. But for the building trades, there were over 30,000 people who went in and out of these gates over the course of building this project as the work ebbed and flowed. It's hard to believe that that many people can be assembled in such a small place. And I want to thank, again, all the people at Georgia Power and Southern Company who did everything to make the life of the traveling journey worker. And why they're called journeymen, now we call them journey workers, is because they journey where the work is. They leave their families for extended periods of time. They worked long hours. They lived in their campers, or they lived two in a cheap hotel room where they could keep two, two families going, one on site and one back at home, to take advantage of this opportunity. People don't realize when we started this project, we were in the middle of the Great Recession. And people were desperate for work all across this country. Nowhere more desperate than in the building and construction sector, who was hardest hit by the Great Recession. I'm immensely proud of those people. We had a plant site coordinator. We did something unique here. We put together a labor management committee. And we had a guy, a longtime veteran of of labor management on the management side that we hired to be the interface between the crafts and the owner and the contractors here. Nick Fiore, Nick's not here today, but Nick was here for 10 years. Through a pandemic, through a quadruple bypass, Nick did great work. We had almost zero problems between labor and management on this job. Very few grievances. Everybody was mission driven. Everybody was excited to come to work here because they understood that this was an opportunity of a lifetime to build this plant. And Brent Booker was mentioned earlier. Brent Booker is the president of the Labor's International Union of North America and has been for probably the last 14 months or so. Before that, he was my partner for 11 years. And I can tell you that nobody had put more time and effort into making sure that we, the building trades, held up our end, working with the owner and the contractors, than Brent Booker. I would joke with Tom Fanning, Brent Booker should be on your payroll, not mine. Brent was down here almost on a monthly basis. And anybody that comes from D.C. to get here, like the congressman I'm sure knows, that the reliability of the air travel to get here and back is not always that great, especially in the summer. But I want to make sure that I show my appreciation to Brent Booker for doing one hell of a job in getting 30,000 people here on site and running a great project, Brent. My new partner, Brandon Bishop, was our Southern Region representative. Brandon put a tremendous amount of effort into this project. 
Glenn Kelly's our new Southern Region representative, caught the tail end of this project. And there's many business managers in this audience, past and present, of the local building trades from the Augusta area. You can't believe the Herculean tasks that they did. When you take about small local unions who might have three or four or 500 members and telling them in 18 months or 24 months you're going to need 2,500 additional people, they invested in their training centers, they expanded their training centers, they worked with their contractors, they recruited the local population. We gave so many opportunities to so many people to get to the middle class through the investment that was made by Southern Company and Georgia Power and its partners in this plant. There are so many of them who will never ever know your name, so we'll never be able to properly thank you for the opportunity to lift their family out of poverty and get to the middle class where there hasn't been an opportunity sometimes in generations. So on behalf of all them, I thank you. I thank you. I thank all of you from the investors in this capital project. You have no idea what a difference you made in so many people's lives. And I want to finish with this. We have a saying, if man can imagine it, the building trades can build it. And partnership and leadership through good times and bad times, the respect shown to the people who worked on this project, who I have the pleasure to represent, and to the representatives from the CEO on down, Steve Krasinski and the whole uh, Southern Nuclear Team was so much appreciated and has opened so many doors for us to take advantage of new relationships and new partnerships. But it all comes down to leadership. There were times, and I can tell you, where Brent and I were not sure talking to Tom Fanning on a Saturday as COVID finally hit after about six weeks of two months, finally hit here, what were we going to do? My, Brent and mine's number one obligation is the health and safety of the members that we represent. And I spoke to Tom that Saturday morning and Brent spoke to Brent, uh, Brendan Bechtel, our EPC contractor. And we reconvened on Monday with Tom's entire board leadership team and made some decisions about what we were going to do. I can tell you I was not only nervous about the members that me and Brent represented on the job site becoming ill, I was also worried about Southern companies a going concern if we made a bad decision. And with the confidence of Tom and his team, and Brendan as his team, and the building trades locally, we made some decisions and we moved ahead and we moved forward. And today is the end result. And everybody has their different opinion about what it is. But for me, this is the eighth wonder of the world, and I couldn't be prouder of the people that we worked with to build it. Thank you. Sean, thank you so much. Your leadership has meant a lot, and your friendship has really mattered, so thank you very much. Now let me ask U.S. Representative Rick Allen, who is here representing his home district, but also all the elected officials over the years who have supported this project. Rick, welcome home, and please share your remarks with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman. Well, first, I want to welcome everyone to the 12th District of Georgia. Thank you for being here. What an amazing day that I am so happy to be a part of. Let me tell you a little bit about Georgia and the 12th District of Georgia. It's home of the Masters Golf Tournament. It's home of Augusta University and our Medical School of Georgia. It's home to Fort Eisenhower and the Cyber Center of Excellence. We have the Vidalia Onion. 
And just two hours up the road, the national champion Georgia Bulldogs. Go dog. But right now, John, as you said, I agree with you. We're looking at the eighth wonder of the world. What an accomplishment. You know, our state has been under great leadership. We have been the best state to do business in more than 10 years in a row. Sean, it's about workforce. It's about hospitality and the way you were treated here. That's the way we treat our workforce here in Georgia. Georgia has the greatest workforce in the nation. But we have a shortage and we got a lot of work to do on that. The uh, first call I got, I, I knew about the project, and the first call I got was from my classmate at Auburn University, David Jones. He wanted me to come down here and, uh, and look at what, what, what was going on. This is long before I ever thought about running for Congress. And this is what we saw. We stood up, had a fence all the way around this thing, and a big hole in the ground. But I'm going to tell you, David was so excited to finally build another nuclear power plant that he had not been involved in for 30 years. He was so excited about that. I'd like to congratulate Southern Company, o Oglethorpe Power, MEAG Power, Dalton Utilities, and all partners involved in the successful completion of the Plant Vogel expansion project. Since, busy, since being elected to Congress, I've had the opportunity to visit the facility on multiple occasions. Seeing it to fruition is, uh, is nothing short of remarkable. As Sean, you mentioned COVID and the issues uh, with this new design. But folks, we've done it now. These people have shown us how to do it. Thank you for showing us how to do big things. It's time for America to do big things, right? So Madam Secretary, I'm gonna hold you to it. We're gonna continue building these big things because this is home of the largest clean energy generation project in the United States of America. And I am so proud that it is right here in Burke County, the largest county in my district of 23 counties, and home to this incredible accomplishment. You really, I just, words don't have, I don't know what to say, to be honest with you. Other than Tom, you and I had many conversations and all the leadership, Southern Company and also uh, MEAG and uh, the other partners, and uh, there was no question. There was no question in my mind that we would not be sitting here today. I didn't know when, but it, but it was no question in my mind that we would be sitting here today. And I'll tell you what I see when I fly into Augusta is I see these four stacks humming. And I say, boy, it's good to be home. Thank you. Tom for that. I'm also proud to serve on the Energy and Commerce Committee in the United States Congress. And on behalf of our committee, we thank you. I'm on the Energy Subcommittee. So we're going to be very involved in an all-in energy program that will again return energy dominance to the United States of America that makes us the most powerful nation in the world. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 12th District of Georgia. Congressman Allen, thank you very much. You have been a long, strong supporter, and we appreciate being here in your home district. Let me now run a quick video to introduce our next presenter. This place is my home. 
I grew up right here and raised my family here too. When I was little, I'd see Plant Vogel every day on my way to school. And today, I'm proud to say I work there. Georgia Power gave me a career in nuclear energy that I could not have imagined. And now my son wants to follow in my footsteps. To see a pile of dirt grow into a working nuclear power plant and to know I've helped build it is incredible. At Georgia Power, investments like these new nuclear units will serve our customers with reliable, zero emissions energy for generations to come. We built this plant for my community and communities across the state. And that is clean energy for a growing Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tanya Ward Buxton. Tanya, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Yeah, that's me. A little girl who grew up in a small town in Georgia with a nuclear power plant in her backyard, who today is standing before you in what can only be described as a historical moment at the largest clean energy power plant in the United States, a plant that I helped build and now I get to help operate. You know, I still feel proud watching this video. It's a reminder of how far I've come and that I really am living my dream now. Working on the Vogel Project has given me the confidence to keep reaching. It has helped me as become a leader, not just within the company, but within this very community where I still live today. My Vogel story isn't complete without mentioning my former pastor, Walter Duke Sr., another Burke County native who began his career as an engineer at Vogel 1 and 2 and became a vice president of Georgia Power. He is my inspiration and mentor along this journey, and I want to pay that forward to all the other little Tonys in the world. I will share with them what I've learned on this project. Build relationships, work hard for and with others, and always have integrity in everything that you do. No matter the task, give 100% and don't settle for less than what's right. Keep going, do good, and good will come from it. Truly, today is good, and not just for me or you, but for our community, our state, and our country. I'm proud to have played a part in this good, in this great moment, and I look forward to being here and operate Plant Vogel for many years to come. Thank you. Tanya, thank you, and this is why Southern Company is such a great company. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. We proved we can do hard things. And so let me thank you so much for being here to celebrate this momentous occasion with us. Let me close by saying, take care of yourself and take care of each other. But as we close, we have one final special presentation, the singing of God Bless America. <laughs> 